To celebrate 70 years of Godzilla and the release of GXK, of course, let's go through movies, comics, cartoons, anime to look at all the mental ways that humans, aliens, and other monsters have tried to put a stop to the tsunami of rage that is Godzilla. And there are some crazy ones. We got bats, mechanical spiders, mechanical bees, satellite mounted black hole guns, mines, cigars, dreams. They've put loads of stuff in his mouth. He's been pelted with dead people and he's had to fight his own father. Anyway, I'd love it if you hit like on the video and if you're into robots and monsters, then I've got loads of cool stuff for you. So you might want to consider subscribing. All right, let's start with the most obvious ones. The most famous of which would probably be the oxygen destroyer. A weapon of mass destruction so powerful that its inventor, Daisuke Serizawa, was initially reluctant to deploy it. Story goes that Serizawa was a professor specializing in the study of oxygen and accidentally discovered a way to use it in a horribly destructive chemical reaction. It somehow uses a payload of micro-oxygen contained in a capsule that once released starts a chain reaction that creates a new type of energy that first suffocates anything in the blast radius and then eats its flesh and even bone, often disintegrating it completely. It was mentioned again in Godzilla Raids again, I guess when they wished they had another one of them, but also had a brief cameo in Godzilla vs. Biolante in 1989. How the hell it got there, God only knows. Then again in Godzilla vs. Destroy, where the device's terrifying legacy continued as it was ultimately responsible for mutating the tiny creature that would eventually become Destroyer. In King of the Monsters, it was said that the device would kill every living organism within a five mile radius which I think is like five times Hiroshima. Ironically, Godzilla seemed to be winning the fight against Ghidorah here when the human super geniuses decided to drop this device, interrupting the fight and allowing Ghidorah to escape. Well done. Oh, a similar thing happened in the cartoon. He's fighting this giant worm-like creature and the army decided to drop some kind of biological gas on them. It ends up mutating the bad guy, making it more powerful, of course, while messing up Godzilla and stopping him from taking down the monster. Anyway, this is nothing to do with the Oxygen Destroyer. It just popped into my head. Anyway, the Oxygen Destroyer was also used in half century war in very similar circumstances. And Singular Point had the orthogonal diagonalizer, which in its essence is a very similar device. I'd say the next most famous Godzilla killing device, probably even more famous actually, would be Mecha Godzilla. my favorite version of which would be the GVK version. But it first showed up in 1974's Godzilla vs. Mecha Godzilla, having been created by the evil black hole planet 3 aliens. <laughs> who planned to conquer Earth after our planet's main defender had been disposed of. <laughs> then in the Heisei era, it was built by a human organization called G-Force, who constructed it using technology reverse engineered from the remains of Mecha King Ghidorah. And believe me, we will get back to him later. Then it was Kiryu's turn in 2002, controlled by the JSDF, this time having been built around the skeleton of the original Godzilla bones that had been dug up from Tokyo Bay. Of course, he went batshit before returning to Tokyo SOS to fight alongside Mothra and her babies. It was back again in the Godzilla Earth Netflix anime and was built by the humans and an alien race called the Bilosolado. But Earth had to be evacuated before Mechagodzilla could be brought into the game. Over the next thousands of years though, its head would survive, spreading a nanometal, which if I understood it right, rebuilt its facility, which came to be known as Mechagodzilla City. And yes, they turned Mechagodzilla into a city in this one. Then it was the GVK version that we all know and love, but there was also a black MG in a series called Godzilla Island, as well as Chibi Mechagodzilla. Anyway, in Godzilla Oblivion, they created multiple mini Kiryus, but of course, they weren't enough to stop the big guy, and in Rulers of Earth, their three Mechagodzillas ganged up on him and blasted him in the mouth. They also generated these force fields by doing that spinning thing that he does, I can't remember if that has a name or not, and tried to crush the big guy between them. Anyway, Mechagodzilla isn't the only mech that's tried to stop Godzilla. The Power Rangers brought in the Zords. In the Power Ranger crossover comic, in a nutshell, the Exilians who've been trying to take over Earth team up with Rita Repulsa, and this guy assumes that the Godzilla is one of their monsters and called in the Dragon Zord. The Dragon Zord actually does pretty well, but as soon as Godzilla powers up that atomic breath, everyone knows he's in trouble. There's no more doubt. Thoom! Thoom? Thoom? And the Dragon Zord even gets lifted above Godzilla's head like it was nothing. Anyway, the other rangers show up and unleash their Zords, but the amount of heat Godzilla is emanating means that their shielding can't hold up. So they eventually combine into Megazord and the two fight each other to a stalemate. Anyway, long story short, and as often happens in these in these versus comics, the Rangers realize that Godzilla isn't the bad guy and they team up with Godzilla to fight Rita Repulsa and the Zillion's monsters, notably Gigan and whatever the hell this is, and eventually Ghidorah. What is that? Anyway, another mech that tried to kill Godzilla was this bling machine. It was called the Cybersaur and it was from the Dark Horse comics. It had rack missile launchers on its shoulders, laser cannons, plasma bombs, and more. But in round one, Godzilla overpowered this guy fairly easily. One good tail slap sending it reeling and killing one of its pilots. Once repaired though, the Cybersaur did much better, eventually activating the G-Buster, its most powerful weapon. 
This actually did the job pretty good, knocking Godzilla out cold and making everyone think he was dead. It got pretty banged up by Bagara though, and eventually it burst into flame, never to enter the realm of combat again. It was replaced by the All Terrain Chiller. See what they did there? Which was a giant purple spider with a huge energy beam and armor plating that could absorb Godzilla's atomic breath. It also hit the big guy with a compound that totally robbed him of the ability to use his atomic breath completely. It probably would have killed Godzilla had these alien bounty hunters not stepped in because they wanted to be the ones to kill Godzilla and blasted the giant spider. It would get its revenge later though, vaporizing one of them before the other picked it up and threw it at Godzilla, who crushed it and absorbed its nuclear radiation to fully restore himself. Although not before the alien bounty hunters shot him full of arrows, threw a net over him, rank. Like you'd be surprised how many times I've seen this happen. Like these people see a building sized monster and then throw a fucking net over it. And then, oh my God, what's happening here? Yeah, everyone turned into monkeys. Anyway, Zeus sent Poseidon to kill him in, in Rage Across Time, Ares too, both of which fell to the big guy's atomic breath. I mean, if a literal god can't kill him, there isn't much that will. Zeus also set his Hydra on him, but that didn't end well, before Zeus tried to nuke him with lightning, which did do the job, although only temporarily, and at the expense of all of Zeus's power. And we know that because he's really skinny now. Okay, let's talk about how they tried to fight him with migraine. Yes, Jason Statham got his hands on a really, really big gun, which came to be known as a headache beam. It was part of a program called the GMRSS, which stood for Giant Monster Repellent System, which was funded by a coalition of countries in the wake of the original monster attacks and was developed by none other than a big comic book babe. Makes total sense. I guess there were a variety of these weapons and this one is the headache beam, which would induce a searing pain in the monster's head, making you think twice about f***ing <laughs> shit up. The big issue seemed to be that the operator needed to be within a certain proximity from said rampaging monster, which would involve a fair amount of peril, danger, and potential death. Bruiser, or Boxer, or whatever his name was, said that poor Angurus would feel like he was experiencing the worst hangover of his life, and ultimately it just served as a distraction, and they ended up having to blow up the big horny and Edinburgh Castle. Did I just call him the big horny? Anyway, Boxer would eventually jump into Godzilla's mouth and fire the weapon, incapacitating Godzilla for a short time, but effectively destroying the weapon, never to be used again. What a shame. I, for one, think this was a great use of many tens of millions of billions of taxpayer dollars. Professor Yoshiwara, hell-bent on avenging her parents, tried injecting him with a toxin derived from one of Godzilla's scales, loaded it into a rocket, and then fired it into his hide. As this dude said, though, it only seemed to make him more dangerous as the pain only enraged him further Rank. as he rampaged even harder, blood spewing from every orifice in his face. This genius thought he could fill a lake full of gasoline and light it on fire with his cigar. Just as Godzilla was passing through it, but look what happened. Rank. The Godzilla vs. Hedera issue of Godzilla Rivals was kind of a weird one. It's set in New York in the 70s and starts with a brother driving an ambulance furiously through the streets as his sister lies bleeding in the back. City is being devastated by Godzilla fighting Hedera as we speak. Anyway, turns out the sister worked at a kaiju research facility that had been developing a way of repelling the monsters. Somehow this dish would emit a cocktail of radioactive stuff, sending the monsters running, but also killing every human in the vicinity. So whoever gets the job of reconnecting that cable there is toast. So the brother's like, no, I'm not gonna allow you to kill yourself. She's like, die, motherfucker. Oh no, wait, that's the wrong panel. She does push him in a hole though. Mm. Hmm. Saying that she's too weak to connect the cable. So he does it. This is the face she pulls. As you totally would had you just pushed a sibling to their death. She somehow doesn't die because Hedora has magically absorbed all the radioactivity. She's about to kill herself due to all the guilt from killing her brother. I mean, yeah, she sure looks guilty here. But then the brother comes back and... Uh, oh my god. Okay, I give up with this one. Whatever. Basically, in the end, the plan works and the monsters skulk off back into the ocean. In Godzilla in Hell, which as I spoke about in my last vid, sees our guy traveling the circles of Hell Dante style, well, Satan and his legions throw pretty much everything they've got at him, including a mirror image of himself that splits into body horror, cosmic horror, nightmare fuel that tries to consume him alive and in one go. Ugh. Then as he's approaching the literal gate of Hell and this fiendish demonic abomination that's guarding it, he gets plagued with a vast swarm of Hell bats who swamp him, then strip him, then strip the flesh from his bones, causing his unsupported skeleton to collapse in a heap. But these little fuckers, now each with the small piece of the king inside of their bellies, start randomly screonking before being completely possessed by the spirit of the big angry, and fly back to become his body. And his atomic breath even becomes a million tiny little atomic breaths, which all put together create an almighty blast that seems even more powerful than before. 
to kill that demon beast guard thing guarding that gate and mosey coolly through the gates of hell and back to the realm of the living wonder if he gets his actual body back on the other side though you'd hope so wouldn't you this dude overcome with grief at the trampling of his village and his livelihood and his family and probably god knows what else try to shoot him with his rifle just a rifle and if you thought that trying to kill a 300 meter reptile with a one inch slug was crazy what's even crazier is that he missed and hit a guy who happened to be climbing yes climbing for sport on godzilla's back that must have been a strange day. In Rage Across Time, Hannibal, or the Elephant Guy as he's more commonly known, in his quest to find a passage across the Alps to attack the Romans, he stumbled upon the Big G, so he loaded up the corpses of his fallen soldiers, set them on fire, and then catapulted them at Godzilla, I guess hoping that he was remotely flammable and would also catch fire. Sound plan. I mean, it's worth a shot, I guess, right? Um, in Godzilla Oblivion, scientists opened a portal to another dimension and accidentally let Ghidorah into our universe. I know. This comic was basically just a bunch of supposed smart people making absolutely terrible decisions. And what's their plan to solve that little quagmire? Oh, we'll steal Godzilla as well so the two can kill each other. Anyway, they try nuking both monsters, but that doesn't work. So, long story short, they create Mecha Ghidorah. That's right, it's time for Mecha Ghidorah. One of the most seminal villains of the franchise and possibly the only way you could make a villain like Ghidorah even more terrifying. In Rulers of Earth, he was created by the Cryo and controlled by the spooky twins before Godzilla picks up Angurus by the tail and smashes him into Mecha Ghidorah. <laughs> that probably should have been in the worst things bit. But Mecha Ghidorah was first used as an anti-Godzilla weapon in 1991's Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, where Ghidorah's remains were repurposed by the Futurians in the 23rd century and then sent back to 93, I think it was, to stop another Goji rampage. What followed was of course an epic battle because this thing of course had all of Ghidorah's power plus a whole lot more. And although Godzilla's atomic breath was doing pretty bad damage to him, it was only really brought down because it tried to pick up the big G and carry him, um, enabling the big guy to let out an atomic breath at point blank range, which sent them both crashing into the ocean. Now that I mentioned the evil twins though, in Kingdom of Monsters they mind controlled a bunch of monsters, in this case Batras and Rodan, then got them to pick up Godzilla and then dropped him into a nuclear power plant and then nuked it with Batra's prison beam, which blew up big time, but still wasn't enough to put him down. Oh, for clarity, what they were trying to do was weaken him enough to bring him under their mind powers as he was the only one of the kaiju they weren't able to control. Do you think it worked? Of course it fucking didn't. This guy, don't get controlled by nobody. Bzzz. The army came up with an army of these sick flying machines in the Marvel comics. I think it's basically a platform that you stand on with a rotor underneath and then some guns mounted on them. It's a f***ing death trap, let's face it. Half of these guys probably died before they got anywhere near Godzilla. They also tried to zap him with concentrated light from this proper retro space cannon. Iceman tried to freeze his head, then they tried to drop electro nets, which is slightly better than the regular nets from before. In Planet of the Monsters, they tried to trap Godzilla Phileas under a mountain, then inject an EMP probe inside of his body which they believed would cause his body to become overloaded with, with electromagnetic energy and make him explode. This one actually worked, but it turned out that this was just a smaller version of Godzilla and there was a larger one called Godzilla Earth waiting there the whole time. Then later in the trilogy, they tried to fly a mech called a vulture into his body. Trouble is that Godzilla had raised his temperature so high that the pilots had to coat themselves in a nanometal to survive the Mech Godzilla nanometal. Yeah, this guy was going kind of crazy at the time. In Godzilla Rays again, they tried to bury him in ice. He went down blasting, like he was spewing atomic breath till the very last. And then they tried the net shit again in Mothra and Godzilla. Who thought this would work? Nearly as preposterous was what actually did work, when Mothra's larvae sprayed him with silk and then he fell in the sea. And they swam off, all happy, yay! In Shin Godzilla, they rammed trains packed with explosives into his legs, then launched rockets at him, then collapsed buildings on him to knock him over, after which they shoved tubes in his mouth and pumped coagulant into his body, which after a few attempts, took his body temp down to minus 196 degrees, freezing him solid, but not killing him outright. The Nebulans made Godzilla Tower. Yeah, a theme park tower. Yeah, a tower in a theme park. To kill Godzilla. Ooh. It was in a theme park and it was a tower. It was equipped with this powerful laser gun. Shot him in the eyes? That was based on his atomic breath, which seemed to really hurt the big guy. But in the end, they resorted to more traditional Godzilla killing techniques, like, you know, giant cyber turkeys, and used the tower to control them. Although Jet Jaguar was mostly an ally to Godzilla in Godzilla vs. Megalon, he would go on to battle and kill him in Godzilla Singular Point. 
in Return of Godzilla, after accidentally releasing a nuke from a satellite and then attacking him with a spaceship called the Super X, they eventually lured him to a volcanic crater using a magnetic transmitter and then BOOM! In Godzilla Millennium, the JSDF developed a new kind of missile called the Full Metal Missile. But they discovered that a substance in Godzilla's cells enabled rapid healing and rendered him pretty much immortal. So, missile's useless. Then aliens took his DNA and created Augur with it. The Dimension Tide was a device that could harness the destructive energy of a black hole, miniaturize it, and then fire it. And when I say miniaturize, I mean like a lot, because these things are like the most destructive power like we can't even imagine. But hey, it allowed a small creature from the dinosaur age to enter our time. They strapped this thing to a satellite, and I guess they missed when they fired it because it just created a hole in the ground. And Godzilla just sprang up again two seconds later. Megagurus knocked it out of the sky with these sonic waves that it emitted from its wings. And if there's one thing you don't want, it's a device capable of creating black holes crashing uncontrollably down towards your face. Anyway, this pilot lady had to fly her plane into Godzilla, giving the device something to lock onto. And I mean, look, she's ejecting. Lady, it's a black hole, a full size of one of these holding the fucking galaxy together. They got a wizard to awake three guardian monsters in GMK, spirits of which entered Godzilla's body, robbing him of the ability to swim, I guess, because he just like sank and he was like, oh, no, I can't. And later sailed a submarine into his mouth. I think he even belches after he swallows it. And it's pretty funny because the submarine is like swimming around inside his esophagus, and so it fires out a missile. That's the noise his missiles make, which drills out from the inside. I mean, Godzilla was like, ah, oh, bro. You hurt my tit good. And then went back to doing what he was doing before. Except this time when he went to charge his atomic breath, it came out of the hole. And this must have been pretty painful for Godzilla, you know, because he was like flailing around and then he made the little squeaky roar, you know, the one that was like, and then he collapsed to the bottom of the ocean. And on top of that, the submarine must have sailed through the hole to victory. Gigan Rex took the power cores out of his subordinate Gigans called Miles and used their energy to augment the power of his own chest laser, which was countered with this supercharged white atomic ray from, from the Big GZ. In Final Wars, they discovered these human mutant hybrids with superhuman strength and extraordinary physical capabilities, so repurposed them as super soldiers and something something managed to get control of the attacking monster plague. Apart from Godzilla, who beat them all and their ship called the Gotengo. The 1978 Hanna-Barbera cartoon basically tried to kill him with every element imaginable. First, the Firebird, I guess they weren't allowed to use the name Rodan, tried to drown him. Then it was the Earth Eater's turn. He was too tough for Godzilla's laser beam eyes until it fell into the water and turned into mud, that is. Then you had these stone lions that tried to freeze him to death. And then it was the turn of the Megavolt monster, which as you can guess, was an electricity creature that lived in the sea. And he, of course, tried to electrocute him. To be honest, I'm not going to spend too long on this series. I've only really watched the first five or six apps because the formula is exactly the same in every single app. Basically, people are on a mission. People get into trouble. They call Godzilla to get them out of it. Godzilla fights monster. Godzilla gets annoyed by Godzuki. <laughs> It's very much the Scooby-Doo formula. Anyway, back to Godzilla the series. This guy attacked him with robot bees called Cyberflies, first to inject him with a compound to knock him out cold, so he could then put a neurotransmitter inside his body, which would then allow him to basically remote control Godzilla. Later though, when this guy's plan started to go sideways, he set the Cyberflies on him to, and I quote, put him out of his misery. He nearly got absorbed by stripy orange goo. Yeah, these guys were experimenting with microbes when they accidentally created this organism that could shift shape and constantly grow. It wasn't a deliberate attempt to kill Godzilla, but it very nearly took him down. Then he was attacked by giant mutated rats, then a creature called the Crackler that was being directed by this guy's subconscious brainwaves. Yeah, it all started when these boss tried to cure his insomnia. The next thing you know, you've got a giant creature attacking, and you know, oh my god, even the realms of giant monster movies, this just doesn't hold up. Step one, try to cure insomnia. Step two, Step three. Oh shit. Then when the team found an alien ship on the ocean floor, he had to fight two of their creatures called Leviathans. <laughs> Then there was a whole hive of giant mutated wasps that could shoot off their stingers, and of course, their queen. <laughs> this guy stole Nessie's baby, prompting the Loch Ness monster to go berserk, and obviously Godzilla had to step in and help get a baby back. You know what? I'm sure there are many, many more of these. Like, there's a whole second season I haven't even seen. But the one I really, really want to talk about... <laughs> ...turned him into a cyborg. is Cyber Godzilla. So remember the Leviathan aliens I mentioned a couple of minutes back? Well, those evil bastards managed to get their hands on the body of the original Godzilla from the 98 movie. <laughs> K 
case I didn't explain it already, the main Godzilla in the series is one of the eggs that managed to hatch, I'm guessing the one that you see at the very end of the movie. Anyway, that Godzilla then takes Matthew Broderick as his mother and basically becomes his pet. So, the aliens get the body of Godzilla 98, implant it with a bunch of cybernetic enhancements. Like, oh my god, its entire torso and arm is gone. It's got these missile launchers. It's really cool. It's got a little cockpit in its chest with a little alien in it. <laughs> and send it out and make it the cornerstone of their, uh, you know, invasion plan. Then Godzilla Jr, or Godzilla 2 as he's sometimes known, heartbreakingly has to choose between his two parental figures, and the evil aliens manage to get him under their control as well. And the whole thing ends heartbreakingly once again as Godzilla Jr chooses Matthew Broderick, Matthew Broderick character I mean, over its own parent and has to kill it. <laughs> At some point, I'd really love to do retrospectives on all of these series from this kind of era, like, you know, this. Oh, wow, look, it's got a Warbat in it. What? The Men in Black cartoon, Extreme Ghostbusters. But to be honest, I don't know if I'm ever going to get the time. After my last vid, quite a few people were asking why I omitted Godzilla Minus One. And I have to be honest, I haven't really seen it yet. Well, not properly, at least. Well, I have seen it, it's just not a great copy. <laughs> but I did some reading up, so it wouldn't get left out of this one. Oh, if you haven't seen it yet, this is your spoiler warning. First off, this guy blew up a mine while it was in his mouth, taking out half of his face. Then this dude proposed luring Godzilla above the deepest part of the bay, attaching canisters of Freon gas to him, that when ruptured, would change the buoyancy of the water, causing our guy to rapidly sink, to be killed by the sudden change in water pressure. If that failed, balloons! Yep, balloons! which would raise him up again real fast, destroying him via explosive decompression. Sounds kind of crazy, but as one of them says, they had better odds of this working than of surviving the war. Now, as an extra backup, they get an experimental fighter plane loaded with explosives and propose flying that into his mouth. Anyway, when they put it all into practice, they manage to get him to sink to the bottom, but that doesn't kill him, so the balloons are deployed until he rips into them, and the boats have to drag him to the surface. And as you probably guessed, the pilot has to fly his plane into his mouth, top of his head gets blown clean off, and his body crumbles from the surplus of atomic energy that had built up in his body as he prepared a blast of atomic breath. I did put a spoiler warning in here, right? All right, you guys, gotta leave that there for now. Make sure you're letting me know if I've forgotten any. There undoubtedly will be. You know, there's um, Monster X I didn't get time to talk about. Legacy of Monarch I haven't seen all the way through yet. Probably loads, loads more. By the time my next video drops, GXK will have been released. Many of you will have seen it, so I hope you guys enjoy it. And fingers crossed that it doesn't suck ass. Massive shout out to my members. If you want to support the channel, there's a button down there somewhere. It really does help keep this channel going. So until the next one, thank you very much for watching and cheerio, bye.